to thank our community first. We thank everybody for joining us for this meeting today. This is the first of four meeting days for the, the Burger 2 meeting that we're going to have for our consolidated plan. So what is our consolidated plan? This is a five-year plan, strategic plan, that we have for the city of Brockton to where we try to set goals and aims to improve on everyday life, or not everyday life, your construction, all right, there we go, um, to improve on the life, the work, and everything of people in Brockton. And so I wanted to first start with some of our programs. I know people looked at pictures, so we're going to start with pictures, because everybody loves pictures, OK? Um, so these two pictures, or these four pictures here, are from uh, NeighborWorks. And so this first one here is going to be uh, 1200 Montello. I believe that's on the south side. I'm sorry I'm not a broccoli person. I'm a transplant. South side. Um, and it's going to be 90, 92 units of housing um, on the south side of Brockton in the Montello neighborhood. Oh, this one, Campello. 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 Okay, there we go. Um, this one right here is 121 Main Street. This has 48 units of housing, 11 affordable housing units, and then it has Brockton Pier on the first floor. This is on the in downtown between Main Street and Frederick Douglass. Um, this one right here is going to be Hotel Grayson. Well, it is Hotel Grayson. This is also a NeighborWorks uh, project. This is going to be 18 units of housing with some mercy space on the first floor. If you drive by it, which I suggest, strongly suggest, um, they pay to have a local muralist pay a mural um, that represents Frederick Douglass and the abolitionist movement and the bodegas. It's beautiful on the panels that are on Frederick Douglass Avenue. It is a wonderful display. It made me want to paint all of our abandoned buildings with a mural. So if you haven't driven past this, this is at 28-31 Frederick Douglass Avenue. So I would strongly suggest you drive by it. Um, we also have in the pipeline um, things for Petronelli Way. Um, it is off of Franklin and Petronelli, again downtown. Um, so this one right here, if you have the opportunity to come up and look, it is going to be called Ringside Residences. This will be New Vision Enterprises. This one, say is 50 units of housing, um, all market rate, um, commercial space on the first floor. They are anticipating starting this project in the spring or summer of 2023. I do not have a completion date, but as soon as I have it, I promise to follow up with everybody who signed into that sign-in sheet that Zane's had. If you put your contact information, I'll let you know when they anticipate to have this done. Um, but the BRA is more than just developing. We also have some programs um, that are tailored towards homeowners and renters um, in some instances. So we have a lead program and a homeowner rehab program. The lead program is led by Danielle. Right. Okay. Um, and it provides funding towards the de-leading of the aging housing stock um, for homeowners and for renters. I can't tell you the exact amount that it children under six are safe in their homes, um, elderly populations are safe in their homes, but everybody in general um, has the right to live in a home that is free of lead paint um, as it has been deemed a hazard. So we do have this program. It has a revolving application process, um, and if you want the help contact information, it's sitting right there in the middle. Um, <laughs> um, and so this, um, like I mentioned, we also have the homeowner rehab program to which um, low moderate income individuals are uh, available, are able to apply for this program and get much needed repairs on their home to improve on the living conditions um, that they experience. 
And so uh, hopefully you guys came up and looked, and these are some of the before and after pictures of a home that was um, completed at 67 Concord Street. This is again a revolving application process that we have for this program. Even though the program manager isn't here, I'm still going to direct you to Daniela because a lot of what we do is dual construction um, for lead and homeowner rehab. So any questions that you may have, um, she is your point person for this, but this is another program um, that we have to be able to improve on the quality of life for the residents in the city of Brockton. So even though we aren't solely development, a lot of what we do is development. And we have quite a few um, developments coming online. One of the ones that we have is Thatcher Street Housing Development. That is behind Massasoit, correct, Zayas? Thumbs up? Yes. Um, and I believe this is in excess of 90 um, units, most of which will be um, uh, not affordable. Most of which will be market rate, but they also have some set aside. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have been in talks to have some set aside for um, condos. So we are trying to push very strongly towards um, home ownership um, in the city. We want the residents of the city to be just as invested in the city as we are. And what better way to own a home in the city um, to own a condo in one of these newly built developments. Um, past projects, we did the Petronelli Way garage that was named after um, former mayor uh, Bill Carpenter. Um, and so CDBG funding went into this uh, to create this garage. I cannot tell you off the top of my head how many spaces are in this garage, but if you see Zayas after this meeting, he has all the numbers for you. I'll work with Zayas. Um, our CDBG grant also does, yes ma'am. Sorry, I was just gonna ask about the CDBG grant. Is there one coming up? Yes ma'am, I got you. We, we work right on it. Too. Um, so our CDPG grant, um, we do a lot of public facility um, improvements. We um, also do a lot of public service improvements. We, um, some of the people who come to us for CDPG funding um, include nonprofits, uh, the police station, most of the nonprofits in the city, um, Charity Guild, Father Bills and Main Springs, um, Family Community Resources. Um, we are able to provide much needed assistance so that they can carry out the missions of their organizations um, so that they can service the people. This is not a rolling application. Applications begin to open towards the end of January and close right at the end of February or the beginning, <coughs> excuse me, of March. Um, Chara is, uh, Charlie's Isaac is the program manager for this program and she's currently in DC attending a training. Um, but I can provide her contact information um, if anyone has any further questions. But a lot of what we do is able to come from the CDBG funding. Um, it allows us a flexible pot of money so long as we are servicing low to moderate income individuals, families, low to moderate income areas. Um, through our CBG funding, we also have the opportunity to improve on public parks and playgrounds. Um, we also provided money <clears throat> for the Downey playground. Um, renovations will be underway for that playground here soon. And then we have our receivership program. So what is the receivership program? Receivership program is a program that we have that takes uh, abandoned, dilapidated buildings and we rehab those or redevelop these properties. And then that enables us to provide these newly redeveloped properties to first time home buyers. Um, it is a program that was not utilized during the COVID period, um, but it is something that Zayas um, feels very strongly about and we will be bringing that back um, to the forefront to get some of these, some of these properties back online and change the scape of what these neighborhoods look like. Um, the home program. So the home program is reserved for uh, 
with Zayas and my former executive director called Brick and Mortar Projects. Uh, so the home program is about development. We provide funding and in Enrich for development. Uh, in return for the development of these projects, we receive home units. And what is a home unit? A home unit is an affordable unit that the developer is required to keep affordable for an affordability period. This affordability period depends on the amount of home funding that they received to develop this property. For example, if you come to me, and I'm just throwing out a number, if you come to me for, or Zayas, excuse me, not me, if you come to Zayas for a million dollars in home funding, please expect to have a 45-year affordability period. What this does is protect this unit, it protects the residents there, so that you're not just taking this, this funding and keeping it affordable for two to three years and then flipping it back to a market rate um, unit to which people are not able to afford. Um, the home, the home uh, program has very strict and strenuous guidelines, but it is invaluable to the development um, of the city. We also have a, through the CDBG program, we have the small business development uh, program that we have that is co-run by Kelly, who's there in the middle. <clears throat> what this program does is provide much needed assistance to small businesses in the city of Brockton. Um, they link them to different um, partnerships that they meet, need. Um, they link them to different support systems that they may need. They connect them to the small business, excuse me, small business um, loans that they may need to score. They provide them with training opportunities. They put on workshops. They attend everything. They are in the city trying to help small businesses develop themselves so that they can become more marketable to consumers um, and more profitable for themselves. Through this program, we also run the facade improvement program um, that is also run by Kelly. Um, and so what this facade program does is it provides assistance with renovations to the exterior of some of these businesses. You increase your curb appeal, you increase the traffic that comes into your business, and in turn, hopefully you increase the profit that you have um, to your business. This facade improvement program loan is a no interest, no payment loan, payable only upon sale, refi, debt, sorry, I put it out there, transfer of ownership uh, for this property. So it is a wonderful program that is not utilized as much as we would like for it to be, um, but it is wonderful in transforming what these small businesses um, have to endure, especially, like I said, improving the curve of it. Um, which leads me to the next one. These pictures over here, if you have the opportunity to come up, these are some of the businesses who have received this facade improvement program loan. Questions? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, no. No question. Okay. Oh, yes, ma'am. Like, um, wheelchair accessible and handicap accessible, like any of these housing, housing developments that have accessibility like that. Yes, sir. So the developers put in accessibility for a wide array of different um, developmentally different persons, whether it's wheelchair accessible, whether it's hearing accessible, whether it's visionary restrictions. Um, it all depends on which development you go to. Um, I can't tell you specifically that every single development that you have up here is going to be, every single development has wheelchair accessible. Yes, there we go. Because that is at the baseline. Yeah. Um, but the different levels of accessibility, you can speak to the uh, project manager or the um, leasing manager, excuse me, of these different properties, and they can tell you all the different accessibility options that they have. But all of these programs that receive funding through us, our wheelchair set at the at the base. Yes. 
So those are conversations that we have. And it is, excuse me, a lot of it is dependent on what the cost to build is. Um, during this COVID period, every piece of material skyrocketed. I think the cost of wood has uh, transcended from when I came to work today until I'm standing in front of you right now. Um, so a lot of that is dependent on the materials, the availability of the materials, um, and what the budget is for the contractor. But these are conversations that we are always having uh, with the developers when they come in for public events. Yes, sir. I know we got some more questions. Yes, yes. So this is extremely impressive uh, display of programs, incentives. Um, we have, speaking for the Chamber of Commerce, we have a number of investors who are in buildings now that are looking to develop. At what point should they sit down with you? What types of programs should they be aware of? So they can sit down with us at any time. The only application that we have that has a strict time frame is CBD. <clears throat> All of our other programs have revolving applications. You can apply today, tomorrow, July. Um, the application process will be the same. The determinations will be the same. Everything will be the same. So if someone is willing or wanting or interested in investing, they can speak, sit down with us at any time. We're in the office Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. Come see us. Yes, sir. Can you make an appointment to see where you go? Can you make an appointment to see us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come see us. We in there. 8.30 to 4.30. Come on in and see us. So I have a question. Yes. Um, several years ago, under the previous administration, there was a meeting at City Hall where I think it was Trinity Construction was going to cut up a program to work with the housing court because one of the difficulties and challenges we face is people are in apartments decent apartments but they have gotten behind on their rent and they're facing eviction and it was a program where they would have an, an advocate who works in the housing court to meet with the families and do mediation and help them figure out a way that they could stay in their apartment and it was through the bra they could stay with their apartment in their apartment they would figure out a loan, whether it was one month, two months, three months, they were behind. Um, and try to catch up on that without having to move. So I just want to convert that to Cindy, who is going to talk. Um, she headed up the grad program on the city that has dished out quite a bit of money um, to help people stay in their homes. So if you wouldn't mind speaking a little bit on it, put you on the spot. Sorry. So they were working on those, the rental assistance for this whole southeastern mass. And, um, and to your point, Pat, as far as housing court, so NeighborWorks actually has housing counselors on Zoom available in during housing court hearings that when the person is there and, and uh, you know, if they're getting evicted, the judge will have them talk to our, our counselors and we'll, we'll explain about the act and how they can apply or if they have what's the status of the application. So that is happening right now. Um, in the past, the Inborks administrator brought in had a specific uh, rental assistance program. They pulled money down from, uh, what was it? It wasn't a department. It could have been. Might have been. I think it was before. It was before, yeah. It was a home maybe but anyway. But Inborks, um, yeah, administered for the city to relieve people from you know, rental assistance utilities, things like that. So there are still programs like that around, uh, but the one, the funds come and go. But RAP is still going strong. Yeah. And so people can still apply for it. But to your point with the housing board, I know for a fact that uh, there are 
There's also a lawyer in the bed that helps us. I'm not going to ask a um, so you said that this is a five-year strategic plan, yes. and when did the project start? Which, which project? I guess the strategic plan altogether. Uh, so no. five years did it start in 2020? So our five-year plan started in 2018, 2017. It is coming to an end. But we're starting the next five-year plan in 2022, and that's what we're trying to, excuse me, 2023. Okay. And that's what we're trying to get input from the public on what goals we should try to set for this next, because we can say what we think, but all of us don't live in a city of property. And so we're trying to tailor these goals or these uh, measures that we set out to achieve based on the input that we get from residents, from developers, from business owners, from city councilors, from elected representatives. Um, that, that, yeah, that's the reason why we have these meetings. Thank you, perfect. Yeah, my follow-up question yes. is, is there going to be designated space for open or collective art to be created and designed? Um, I've been speaking with some artists who are interested in artists in residency yes. and looking for opportunities to collaborate. And so that is a conversation that we've had. Um, we haven't had a lot of conversations with artists, but there are um, green spaces or green links that we are anticipating throughout the city. Um, excuse me, there are murals, uh, much like the one that I mentioned at 2831 Frederick Douglass. Um, we're anticipating different murals throughout the city, um, on buildings, on bridges. So this is a conversation. We want to make the city more vibrant, more walkable, more accessible, um, feel more like home um, to everyone. So if we can collaborate with different organizations, with different stakeholders, um, with different residents, um, this is what this is what we're looking to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, something uh, it's a very loose idea, but something I really value is the, the mental health of children and um, increasing more um, services in schools. To, mm -hmm. I don't know how it will look, but providing more support for their, their mental health, especially the way they are so much of their worry, and especially if they experience trauma and everything. And so that's something that's always on my heart. No, I mean, and that's a very good idea. Um, whereas we at the BRA don't specifically delve into social services, we do provide assistance to organizations who are looking to for support with social services so if you know of some schools or some organizations that provide this type of counseling these type of wraparound services um please refer them to us um we don't want to give out money to the same organizations every single year we would like to see a variety of organizations spread across this entire city the city is in excess of 106,000 people there are countless um, nonprofit organizations and so we would love to see some, some new faces, some fresh blood, some new ideas come in. And so if you know of anyone um, that you think is has an organization that's beneficial, please send them our way. Um, we don't go out and try to recruit people, but we don't turn people away because of an idea. We have a very um, strategic scoring system for all of our funding and everything. So if you know of these different social service agencies that are providing these much needed supports, please send them our way so that we can have a conversation. We just haven't yet had a conversation with anybody who was seeking funding for these services. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the things I want to bring up too um, is like at these types of meetings where we're going to be kind of discussing future areas of development Yes. Uh, to possibly have like kind of like an interactive smart smart board to be able to okay. have a map of property okay. so that they were able to utilize like have like zoning overlays okay. to kind of like you'll just have the map and then you're able to click it and then you're able to see the zoning that is currently in property okay. and areas that specifically are available right now for development Absolutely. so that we can kind of discuss based on those locations. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm going to make a point. Absolutely. Um, 
And so to, to piggyback off of that, our next meeting will be March 8th at the Thorny Lee Golf Course. Um, we're having our second of our complex meetings, and this one we're providing food, right? There we go. Um, so we would love to see people come out with expanding on these ideas. And I'll try to make sure I have a monitor. I got your phone number. And so we'll talk prior to this meeting, um, because I do want it to be interactive. I do want this to be a conversation. I don't just want you, <laughs> Jason's not gonna talk, so I'll, I'll be talking to you at that meeting too. And so I don't want this to just be me talking at you. I want it to be us talking um, to each other, uh, because I don't live in the city of Rockland, full disclosure. And so I'm open to any and all ideas for the reason um, in order to make the city better um, and improve on it. Uh, for those who do live here, work here, shop here, play here. Yes. Uh, my more general question about yes, just the organization as a whole. Are yes. you part of the city of Rockton government? How are you? So we are a quasi-public organization. So yes and no. Um, we are not a nonprofit, but we also do not work for the city. So we're not governed by the same regulations that city officials are governed by, but we work very close. We are a grantee of the city of Brockton, of, excuse me, of Brockton, and we administer these funds with the blessing of the city of Brockton. So we work for them, but we don't work for them. So your funds come from the city of Brockton? Yes, sir. So we're in a little gray area. Well, the federal government yeah, so HUD gives them to the city, the city grants them to us, we administer them. Um, so we're like the city's account a little bit. Yes, sir. Doesn't that also make it so that you're able to get more done? Because you're in that grant it, it, it does. Uh, we, we don't have as much red tape to cross, but we are still bound by certain restrictions and certain regulations. Um, but we are a little more fluid in the way that we are able to maneuver um, through the city. Yes, sir. I've been seeing buildings go up like crazy, so you got to do a good job. So that is not all us. That is a collaboration. It's, it's, it's always a collaboration. It is neighborhood, it is city council, it is the mayor's office, it is everyone. It is contractors, everybody. We just play a small role in being able to push these going forward. So I would apply everybody that is in this collaboration for building this phone. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. I was delayed getting here in your presentation. The part I have seen is with Jerry Cook. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to talk to you for a minute about this survey, and maybe you mentioned it already. No, ma'am. Um, how is this survey going for you? Um, so we don't have as many responses as we would like, and that was something that I was going to touch on. So this survey, um, it is on every couple of chairs here. This is a survey that provides feedback from you. Um, everybody is not a public speaker, which is perfectly fine, but you're able to take this survey and you're able to give us feedback on the things that you want to see, the changes that you want to see happen um, in the city over the course of the next five years. So if you don't have as many responses, we had a Pretty good turnout so far, um, but we would always love, we would always love more. I would love 106,000 responses, but we haven't gotten there. And when, when does the survey close? End of the year. End, end of, of this year? year. This end of this year. December 31st. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, have you been on Rockton Community Access advertising it or describing it? I believe um, someone that I haven't personally. Um, but Chara, um, Charlie, who is our outreach, she's wonderful. Um, she reached out to them, I believe. Um, she's done LinkedIn, she does Facebook, she's done Instagram, she's put on the city, reached out to the city, she's put it on the BRA's website, um, taking it down to the library. So we, we've done a, a number of outlets to try to get this survey out. Yes, ma'am. Good, because of course you know a lot of people aren't on social media. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the second thing I wanted to ask you, you've been there a while now. Yes, sir. In all these programs that the BRA offers, in your opinion, which one makes the most difference for residents of Brockton? Um, so I would have to, it's a tie, right? Okay. I can't, 
say which one specifically. Because we have the home program that builds housing. We have the lead and homeowner rehab program that improves on the current living condition. And then we have the CDBG program that provides money to these nonprofits that are um, providing social services to the, or to, the, to the people who are living here. So it is a collaboration. The easiest funds to get would be lead or CDBG. Home is difficult. I ask for everything except for the blood of your first child. I might ask that too. Um, so I can't say which one is more important because they touch the residents, they touch the developers, they touch the business owners in their own different way. So depending on who you ask on which particular day, you'll get a different answer. So I can't say which one is most impactful because they impact in different ways. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is there a list of um, available spaces that are like a Bandy. Cause I've gone to like the city, they're like they don't have a list. So so we have one. Um, we have one. It's not always accurate, and I say this because available spaces are a lot of these spaces that are in the city are not vacant. Um, there there's an owner somewhere. So the availability of a particular piece of property or parcel of land is dependent on the cooperation of an owner, a, a clear title, of all these other things. And so that's why I said yes, but no, because I don't want to tell you that 123 Main Street is open and then tomorrow the property owner complies with the Board of Health and then that property is no longer available. And so that's, that's probably why they said no. Um, because it, it flexes it. There are a number of variables that makes a property available. Um, and so it's hard to give you a list because it changes momentarily, um, every second, every hour, possibly. Yes. If I may too, the law department for the city hall, in the past when we, the city would require property for whatever taxes or whatever, um, the law department usually would have a list of when I'm a state senator now, but when I was on the city council, Benny Albany used to be the lawyer who, when they're putting properties out to bid for art, you can't sell public property just to anybody else without going through the bidding process. So um, sometimes they have to listen to them. Thank you so much. Yes, everybody wants that lesson. Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody wants it. Me too. Yes, sir. Speaking of property, uh, one large parcel of land that's not here to see it, that's which I don't think so, the reason. Um, <laughs> which I know there's someone at CSX owns it. So CSX it, so owns CSX. But in that CSX site itself, um, there are a number of owners of that particular piece of property. And so without giving too much away too prematurely, talk to me after the first of the year <laughs> and I can give you a better outlook yes. on what this site would look like. Because it is CSX only owns CSX. But this particular piece of land, I believe, is like 66 acres. And it is divided between a number of owners. And their desire to own it, 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 it varies. So it to talk to me after the first of the year. I suck at having business cards, but I know my phone number by heart, and I can give it to you. And my email address. So talk to me after the first of the year. And then we can talk about this. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on TV, so I can't say anything wrong right now. Um, before I get another question, I just wanted to let everybody know that um, what is not displayed up here is that the BRA is starting in the spring an internship program. And so this internship program will be targeted at Brockton High School, Massasoit, Bridgewater, and then Southeastern Tech. This um, internship will be targeted towards sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and it will be an economic development internship. What we are trying to accomplish is to expose students to economic development from many different facets. There is architecture, 
Um, there is construction, there's project management, there's finance, there's nonprofit leadership, there's all these different facets. Understanding that college is not for everybody, and that is okay. But there are many different paths to the road of success. But also, too, if you do want to go to college, at least I was told growing up, which is why I chose it, in order to be successful, you have to be a doctor or a lawyer. But that's not the case in this day and age. And so we are trying to expose students to a different avenue that they may not have thought about prior to this. Um, this will not be a, hey, can you go file this in the back room type internship. This will be intentional, meaningful internship that we will expose students to a variety of networks, contractors, city officials, um, construction managers, um, so that they can ascertain this knowledge. Maybe they don't want to go into it, maybe they won't. But if, they, if we get one to two people who do, then this internship is um, a success. The threshold for entry into this internship will be very low. We're not trying to count people out, we're trying to include people in. Um, so I will be providing more information. Um, as much as we can spread the word, that is what we are trying to do. There's no application fees, there's no nothing. I'm trying to work with <clears throat> the Brockton Area Transit with regards to transportation, trying to work with Uber and Lyft to make sure students have um, transportation, um, working with um, the guidance counselors and the success coaches at these different schools to make sure that this curriculum fits um, their model for their particular degree path or educational journey. Um, but I wanted to put that on the radar, but that is also something that we will be bringing on board um, in the spring. If I may ask, is that a paid internship? It is not a paid internship at the moment. However, depending on the success, um, after the first year, we could potentially provide a stipend um, for the individual. We will be running it in cohorts of <clears throat> me, 15 to 20 students in the spring, the summer, and the fall. Yes, sir. You might want to see me out, but I could probably assist with the mm -hmm. internship. I got my phone number. And my email address. Remember that. Yes, sir. Do we have any questions? Yes, sir. Um, in reference to what you just talked about, like, there's going to be a cap on how many kids they allow in this program? Yes, sir. So I am basing the 15 to 20 students on the number of team members that we have because I want to be able to not overwhelm um, each team member with uh, a, a ridiculous amount of students. And I want to make sure that I can rotate them through. They'll be learning about finance, um, development, nonprofit leadership, um, all this other fun stuff. Uh, I think it's fun. But I work in the field, so. Yeah, as far as that being like a certain cap on it, is there any chance that, I know like uh, Harvard and other schools have posted some of their lectures online, that maybe that's something that they can also. And that's something that we can also, that's something that we can also look at, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Meanwhile, um, we get funding through the Attorney General's Office to pay um, stipends to teens to work in the summer. Okay. So that you might be able to to them for funding for the oh, summer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bridgewater State also has a paid graduate student oh, okay. program. That's they good. pay them. Okay. Some nonprofits, and I think you might qualify. I'll take all of We're qualified public, so that's kind of nonprofit. So I'll take all of them. I can talk to you about that. These are so great. Uh, I'm wondering with the business improvement district that's being proposed for downtown, a lot of these are in uh, that district. Yes. Do we have an overlay map that kind of lays out the 30 or 40 buildings that are, have either recently in the last might. decade been developed, are being developed, or being proposed in development? I think I might. Um, I can take a look um, when I get into the office tomorrow, and if I do, I'll, I'll provide that Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, I don't know if this will be is culinary arts an option, or I know it's not. I know people know how to cook. But I don't know if anybody can show them how to cook in this <laughs> at the BRA. I wouldn't trust all of them. Uh, we've had pop I'm just saying, I wouldn't trust them. Yeah. Could that be an option? Um, it's what? not necessarily something that we do. Uh -huh. um, so I don't think it would fit the scope. However, if they wanted to 
speak to people who have restaurants, who have started restaurants, who are into restaurants. I can provide them with their contact information and perhaps that's something that they can do. But as far as the VRA, that is not our niche. Like I said, we have hot looks. Oh, we'll <laughs> Yeah, the bathroom. Yeah. Did I miss anything? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll talk. Um, so that is all I have. Um, if we don't have any further questions, we can use the Times Network. Like I said, I have my phone number and my email memorized, so I am more than willing to give it out to anybody or everyone who wants to have a further discussion. So if we don't have anything else, I do very much appreciate you taking time out of this cold, chilly, windy Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm to speak with us, and like I said, please mark your calendars. March 8th, uh, Thorny Lee will be our second meeting, and we, we go in there. We're not cooking it. Thorny is providing food, uh, but we're providing food. What time? Do we have time? I think it's 11. So here's the thing. Okay. So we're going to start at 11. But the first part of the meeting, we have an annual meeting every year, so we just talk about everything that we've done throughout the year. And then after, at the conclusion of that meeting, we will have our second public hearing for this. And so, if, you, if I give you my email address, I'm giving you yours, I can tell you, I can tell you the time. But we're also uh, working on creating slides that we can send out.